Welcome to Exchange for Media India Brand Conclave virtual series and uh, today's focus is Dakshin, the South market which is such a huge uh, driving uh, force for the entire TV industry, the advertising industry. And the topic today is emerging uh, stronger post COVID-19. It has, as we know, uh, we are beset with a, with a great challenge that we have never ever experienced before. And we are all coming to terms with this challenge and coming to know uh, what to do, uh, how to emerge stronger. And let me quickly tell you that uh, South, this is the first virtual South series and we are gonna do a um, series of a sequence of uh, more webinars focused on various aspects of television, brand, advertising, and the like. So let me start uh, uh, with the today's panel that we have. Uh, I just want to introduce my speakers quickly. I have with me Ms. Uh, Rani Reddy, Director, Sakshi Group, uh, Mr. Priyar Satish, CEO, MMTV, uh, Mr. Amit Setia, CMO, Siska Group, Ms. Radhika Ramani, Managing Partner, South Motivator, Mr. Puni Das, VP Marketing, Tata Consumer Products, and Mr. V. Chandra Bharati, CEO, News 7. Welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. Um, we, will be, uh, we are live on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, and Exchange for Media Group, as well as uh, we'll be taking live questions uh, from the audiences. We'll have the last 15 minutes for the question and answer round. Let me start with uh, you, Ms. Reddy. I want to come to you first. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, you know, we have seen a spike in uh, viewership over the last uh, 50 days uh, and television has benefited a lot from it. I want to understand from you that how are channels, especially the channels in the South, trying to leverage this to get maximum uh, brand support what are the steps being taken in that direction, if I have to ask you this? Um, with the lockdown around, um, you know, one has not been able to actually translate this into monetizing. You're not able to monetize it that well. And as you would know that uh, regional um, channels uh, mostly rely for a higher um, uh, rate on um, local uh, clients. And uh, particularly, this was a season for educational clients to advertise and be on air. So you see, practically, most of these people are now off air. But these clients are not advertising at all. So one has not been able to leverage uh, the you know additional viewership that we've uh, got during this period, um, Mr. Satish. Uh, if I have to come to you with the same question, that how are regional channels looking at this opportunity that they have? I think, quite honestly, uh, I don't think uh, advertisers have really seized an opportunity. I can understand why they have it. You know, they're also probably looking at their top line, their bottom line, and so on and so forth and getting the supply chain right. So if, if shops aren't open, except essentials, what are you trying to sell? So I think last six to seven weeks have really gone in firefighting for all of us. And some brands, of course, especially in the FMCG space, have seized this opportunity and got a lot more for the money they've been spending. So the reach, the frequency, all of it has really gone up and people have, advertisers who have advertised during this period have benefited. Have they taken advantage of it? It's a tough one. I guess everybody is now here to just about sustain and manage and look at life after COVID. Uh, only FMCG has managed to stay afloat in the last six to seven weeks. Whereas in Kerala, fortunate enough that we live in Kerala, Kerala has uh, seen a lesser number of cases, flattening of the curve, downward curve. So I think most shops are now open in the last two weeks. And we expect a certain uptake in the local business, like Rani was saying, the local retail, which is fairly large in Kerala, should start looking at it. We've lost a big season in any case, which was the, the new year, the issue that went by in April and the wedding season and so on. But it sort of continues now into the early Indian festival starting in August. I think 
seizing this is an opportunity yes the greater viewership the better uh, reach available so advertisers should look at it more seriously and uh, we do hope that the local business will be back soon otherwise uh, it's been a tough two months i want to come get, get a brand perspective before i move to um, uh, mr bharti uh, uh, amit i want to come to you first uh, south is such a huge market uh, for brands for there's such a huge uh, spike in viewership that we have seen and it has been a market that has driven the growth of television as well contributed significantly to it how are brands looking at uh, that market specifically i just want to understand this perspective first see i think uh, yeah so um, i think when it comes to uh, you know uh, my segment which is uh, fmeg which is fast moving electrical goods uh, you know for me uh, there are two things which are very very important uh, you know one is the distribution setup that we have in the country right and second is how are we communicating what we have as a brand so i think for us when you look at south versus non south i think there is no uh, demarcation in the head that you know which one you want to prefer because it's a it's a it's a product which is required by everybody right which is the led bulbs so uh, you know so that's the way we look at media that's the way we look at uh, regional versus mainstream uh, but when it comes to south i was just discussing you know uh, you know uh, with one of your team members before uh, that the fundamental challenge that i face as a brand is uh, i have to actually always look at you know more investments if i am deciding uh, on the fact that i need to go and communicate to the south audiences because um, you know when i can create something in hindi i can you know use that content uh, across lot of states but when it comes to south india i have to look at every state at its you know on its own actually because i cannot overlap certain content pieces and i think that's a huge uh, you can call it as a challenge for not only you know my brand but also for other brands who are who are looking at the south territory so i think uh, that's something that i face all the time when i'm looking at south right um hi uh, can you hear me um, mr yeah. mani i want to come to you with the same question um uh, how are agencies looking at uh, this uh, the the spike in viewership that we see uh, there i mean what is your advice to brands in such a situation how are you guiding the brands that are with you to leverage uh, this spike that we are witnessing um so i think i mean fundamentally i think one of the things which continues to happen is uh, of course uh, you know a channel's ability you know is essentially to reach the brand objective is to continue to play a very important role in determining what the channel choices are so when it comes to uh, you know what we are looking at at this moment you know which challenge spends from brands as well is uh, is about you know how do we get more for less so essentially how are we getting you know a lot more in terms of you know through uh, you know better effective planning and more efficient buying right so this is broadly what we are currently trying to do so in this entire uh, scenario where you're seeing a spike in viewership you know your also uh, your ability your choices are also you know quite uh, quite wide so it is about um, how do you you know what channel uh, essentially plays uh, the most efficient and effective uh, route to your consumer is essentially what we are also looking at and that's what we advise our um, you know our um, brands as well i'll come to you uh, mr das i want to go to mr bharti first uh, Uh, Mr. Bharti, what is the story been uh, at your network so far? Um, um, what are you doing to get maximum attention from brands in this set us in this setting that we are witnessing? True, <clears throat> I will largely concur with uh, Mr. Reddy and uh, Mr. Satish. Uh, during this COVID period and the lo- during the lockdown period, obviously the uh, uh, number of eyeballs that uh, the regional channels deliver went. very high did we monetize it or did we had get an opportunity to monetize it no it does not instead there are brands which are negotiating with the channels for reduction in rate uh, for example even on sun tv which is which continues to be the number one channel continues to deliver 1300 1400 plus even during this lockdown period 
uh, there has been very tough negotiations in terms of reducing the rate. So the increased eyeballs have not actually benefited the regional channels during the lockdown period. Going forward, given the fact that the economy is slow and the lockdown has also contributed to uh, uh, severe constraints in uh, the business of that crisis, we expect the same trend to continue where there is going to be tough negotiations for uh, the uh, broadcasters from the advertisers. And the one interesting thing which has happened is that many of the brands were, were interested in sort of playing their TVC. They would like to play in content integration by way of Aston Bands or L Bands or whatever at the rates of what they would have otherwise paid for their TVC. And uh, normally these Aston Bands and the L Bands were sold at a premium. Now that premium is lost. Okay. And going forward, I very much think that this trend is going to continue and the broadcasters are having are going to have a very tough time convincing the client to invest in, the, in their network. Mr. Das, uh, uh, how much is your brand looking at uh, what is happening around the music uh, patterns that we are witnessing? So, I mean, I think these are obviously exceptional times and um, from, I think from a brand point of view, FMCG point of view, I think the challenge, immediate challenge remains to uh, ensure there are adequate supplies, uh, you know, uh, in, in markets which are opening up or have opened up and ensuring your factories are running, your workers are safe while delivering and you're, you have enough heat on the street to go and, uh, you know, deliver products. Uh, I think post that it's more about understanding, uh, you know, what the consumer concerns are today. And, uh, and then sort of seeing what's the right, uh, you know, uh, thing to do, whether on air or, uh, you know. And I think as some of, some of the people have, I think, pointed out, this is not so much about uh, just being on air. It's about also being relevant. I mean, it's, it's not just being on air for being on air's sake. That, you know, if you're on air, what's the message you have for your consumer? Is it relevant? Uh, and, and I think in a lot of cases, it's also about if you don't have anything to say, around this time, just be silent. It's fine. You don't really need to have that pressure. So I think it's a bit of both. But yeah, I think the genuine challenge is, is about just ensuring that right now you have adequate stocks and, uh, you know, and, and sort of conserve uh, to ensure that you come back uh, when you have the right thing to say to the audience. As I think somebody started off by saying before this, uh, in, in I think in the first week, second week of lockdown, people didn't even have brand choices. They were just... I think you had a list in mind and you would go and buy whether on e-com or anything. You'll end up buying pretty much everything, you know, which was very different uh, because you were just going by availability. So what role does brand have at that time? And I think it's, it's prudent to conserve and, and ensure. But of course, uh, the idea is as a good marketer and as a as, as, as good uh, brand guy is to keep your eyes on the ground and then see. Because now we have spent enough time in the lockdown. Uh, and now how do you react to the environment? I think it's very Mr. Satish, I want to come to you. Uh, uh, tell me, what is the thinking at networks largely uh, when you are witnessing this unprecedented spike? Is there uh, a fear that it might go away once the normalcy or the lockdown eases as other platforms open up? I mean, what is the network thinking? What's the strategy going to be as we move on to adjust to a setting wherein you are, you know, you can convince the brands that look, come advertise your would the numbers still be with you post this uh, lockdown eases? The two things, before I get to your question, I have a sort of a quick word for Amit. He spoke about a national brand like his working with a Hindi creative, with a Hindi celebrity or a, a national celebrity, which doesn't work in the South. I must tell him that he should also work with local content company like, like ours to try and create some local content, local celebrities. So that's a separate conversation we could have. The challenges, I think, to localize content to reach out to local audiences is something that we probably can specialize. The new normal is also going to be about you don't need necessarily a creative agency to create a brilliant TV commercial. Right? There are opportunities lying with broadcasters and content creators and OTT original creators also like ours. Uh, to answer your question on whether the fear of will we lose our audience who has been here with us, Everybody, I think, has had a certain fair share of 
uh, channel share like our NARK, Salvation Shares, before lockdown. Post lockdown, the, the sort of the ratings have gone up, the viewership has gone up. Some people might have got some disproportionate growth, some people might have degrown, very few have degrown. Most people have only grown. Now, post the lockdown, which is about seven, eight weeks now, and like in Kerala, things are returning back to normalcy, we're already sort of seeing a trend that uh, the audiences are settling down. It's not the high that we saw in April, which exists in May. It's about how good the comeback is going to be from a content perspective from our side. How do you grab something that people might have missed out? It's all about the content that we want to create, how quickly we can create the content. We hope to get some confirmation today, how soon we can restart original content. Now, when we restart original content, are we going to get somebody else's eyeballs too, beyond what we already had? Would, would be a matter of time in the next few weeks, we'll know. I guess everybody's effort is going to be in that direction in trying to, especially in the entertainment space. As far as the new space is concerned, I think we're still on a high. You know, it might have gone 4x, 5x sometime in April to settle down at about uh, 3x thereabouts now. But that might be a bit of a drop and entertainment picking back again to a new normal or the earlier normal. That would probably be sometime in June when original content could probably come back once government gives permission. Ms. Reddy, uh, how do we sustain the interest of audiences in television that is there right now, post uh, when the cinemas open and live entertainment opens, you know? Uh, is, is this strategy being worked on right now by networks to sustain the numbers that are in their favor right now? Yeah. Um... See, television had its own audience always. That doesn't go away. Um, I think cinemas is something a little far away yet. I don't see cinemas opening uh, very soon now. And uh, yeah, in terms of content, I guess, uh, you know, uh, I'm speaking from a news channel perspective. Uh, maybe, you know, people are now looking at uh, something beyond historical debates and uh, all the time giving them uh, uh, news which is uh, depressing. I think uh, one needs to become like, uh, at least news channels need to be mood elevators at this point in time and uh, sh uh, give a good measure of both uh, the reality, uh, I mean, reality out there and also the positive side and uh, there, there needs to, they need to build more hope. Okay, um, so because something like this has been unprecedented, people were never prepared for something like this. So there's a role media has to play in, uh, you know, sustaining uh, interest. And uh, if your content strategy is right, I'm sure you'll be able to sustain uh, viewership. I want to come to you, Ms. Ramani. Uh, tell me, uh, as you're witnessing the spike in digital consumption, you know, we're seeing a lot of uh, attention, focus on digital as well. So is television, print is nowhere. How would the marketing mix shape up as we move on? I don't know what is the post COVID world exactly because how far is that, you know? But maybe when the lockdown eases and there is more normalcy around, how would the marketing spend shape up according to you? I said, you're basically asking me to be an astrologer at this moment. Um, because there are so many, at this point in time, there are many, many force, you know, forces at play here, right? So you have, uh, on one hand, you have consumer sentiments and circumstances which are going to be determining, you know, what the demand for any product, you know, um, is going to be. You're going to have a category's ability to produce and distribute, which is going to be determining the supply. And overall, you're going to have, uh, you know, the evolving viewership patterns, which are also going to be playing a role on, you know, what media platform is going to do well. So in this entire scenario, you know, if um, the way I see it at this moment, I mean, what are the two platforms which continued to survive uh, during this COVID period was television and digital. And television at this moment is at about, you know, a 45% share of market at this moment. And I don't think that's going to go down too much. So post-COVID, I think uh, television and uh, digital are still going to be quite important mediums, uh, which are going to survive. 
how they evolve is going to change quite considerably, I would think. You know, and I think, um, you know, here regional media brands have a big role to play. Because one of the things which we are going to see post-COVID as you have your red, green and orange zones is the fact that, um, you know, you're probably going to have almost a sinusoidal kind of wave of opening and closing for, uh, for the near future which effectively would mean that market prioritization of brands is going to continuously need to change depending on what is open, what is closed, etc. This actually provides a great opportunity for the local um, regional brands because the, the entire point of um, localization is going to become very important. You know? So one thing which we are likely to look at is local brands becoming a lot more important. Uh, you're going to have a, an, an understanding tier two, tier three markets, which previously probably did not provide an opportunity, are new opportunities right now for brands, which were probably a lot more metro focused. So here, uh, you know, what we're going to be seeing is that um, uh, there is a big role to play for regional brands. And that's kind of where I would think, uh, you know, we'd uh, potentially be going towards. Uh, Mr. Sethia, your thoughts on this? Uh, how is your brand looking at uh, at a maybe a couple of months down the line? How would the marketing uh, landscape uh, shape up? I mean, how would the spends be divided according to you? If I have to take your brand's perspective. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, you know, more or less, you know, I would say uh, the life was very simple for us before COVID. You know, like I used to always remember, you know, telling people that 70% TV and, you know, 20% BTL and 10% digital, you know, that was my easy life before COVID happened. And now I think because of the pandemic that we have now in life uh, around us, uh, things are going to be far more uh, demanding. And I think uh, the immediate priority for us would be to ensure that whatever money we put in needs to work far more hard for us. Because uh, yes, uh, marketing is going to derive money from the top line itself. So I think depending upon the performance that we witness in the next coming months, the marketing is going to be fairly uh, agile, I would say, that's the right word. And uh, yes, the pressure is going to be on the performance rather than the, you know, the low hanging fruits of branding and related uh, deliverables initially that we used to look at as well. So I think uh, these are the uh, priority areas for us going ahead. Mr. Bharti, I want to come to you with the same question which I earlier uh, was uh, asking Mr. Satish and uh, Ms. Reddy, how are networks uh, planning to go into another phase, you know, wherein the viewer is with them? What is the strategy at your network right now? What are you doing in that regard? See, during the lockdown period, what uh, really has happened is that, uh, especially in Tamil Nadu, where the CADS penetration is about 97 to 98%. Is that that uh, the time spent has gone up, consequent to which all the channels have got more eyeballs. Uh, the only channel which has lost some amount of viewership in this is in the GEC, which is Z Tamil. Rest every other channel has actually picked up viewership purely based on the uh, time spent going up, which is true with the news channels also, which uh, is what our network is uh, uh, offering. Uh, if you look at the relative shares of these channels, continue to remain the same. Absolute terms, the number of eyeballs have gone up. But if you look at the relative shares, it continues to remain the same. So post-COVID situation, post-lockdown situation, yes, the same relative shares will continue to exist. Maybe the news channels or the frequency building channels would have less number of impressions shown. But then the relative shares will continue to remain the same. Secondly, if you have to enhance and then retain uh, the news channel for that matter, is that uh, if you have to come up with a newer type of shows and uh, socially responsible kind of shows, which are going to be uh, costly, then the brands which believe in corporate social responsibility should be coming forward to support such an effort and sustain those kind of programs, which these channels are doing at this point in time during the lockdown. The only uh, uh, disappointment as the network, as many of the networks, especially the news networks, have is that 
the the responsible actions of the news network during this time is not being appreciated by the so called uh, socially conscious branch by putting in not more money at least the money that is adequately required for these channels to continue to do this kind of work so the uh, uh, the socially responsible content which otherwise also being offered by the news channels to get enhanced post the lockdown period would very much depend on what these brands are willing to spend on these channels or rather would they like to take the easiest route of uh, placing their spot in a film which is being run by kan tv or uh, vijay tv which is what they are doing during the lockdown period in the absence of original content being available thanks uh, mr das i want to come to you with another uh, question which is that uh, right now you cannot sell to uh, customers directly you know at the moment our brands looking beyond reach and frequency uh, what is the brand mindset right now if they are advertising what are they looking at so i think it's it's about uh, like i said it's about doing what is the right thing to do i don't i don't know what the other brands are looking for if they are advertising i think it's it's mostly i think the the i think those who are advertising still are there uh, for the long term and i think the idea is to ensure that the long term uh, you know engagement with viewers remain and i think that's why they are advertising i think for brands like us what we have done is uh, you know we have done what is what has been the need of the hour for example uh, you know we used to, we used to have a social property called jagore uh, which has been the clarion call for social causes that we have taken up uh and during covid actually we came up with the same thing and we said this is what is right for the environment so we identified elderly uh, which actually are the most affected because of the covid 19 uh, crisis uh, and uh, we we thought no one's really structurally you know in a in a very uh, uh, organized manner talking about their plight and we took up this cause uh, and and hence did a communication which was which was more social media and digital led so it is actually like i said it is about understanding what's the need of the hour and what your consumer uh, is receptive to hear uh, and and then doing and and of course looking at that how does it tie back to your brand uh, and because it's something that has been associated with us it's something which is in our dna i mean you know, this was the right time to do this uh, so adapt to what what the need of the hour is and and that's what brands need to do uh, and like i said you know you need to figure out what's your relevance during this time and sometimes it can be fine there can be no relevance which is which is okay just don't be there uh, because there's a very uh, there's a there's a there is that thin line that you also need to walk you know about taking commercial advantage of situations versus actually being genuinely doing what is the need of the ar uh, and like i said nobody is i think wants to spend money just for spending money you want to do what is right for that situation and in and and in that do what is the what is the most optimal thing for the for uh, what is required uh, miss ready my question to you is uh, i mean brands those brands which are still advertising still spending money on uh, television uh, are you uh, offering them something else you know to maximize their value what are you doing uh, from your end you know at your end what are you doing to maximize the value that you offer to those brands yeah so you know the brands that we are talking about are basically two categories that i say some are the you know some are the categories which are, are uh, going to see a boom and there are categories which are going to go bust the categories which are going to go uh, you know see a boom would be say fmcg and uh, uh, you'll see fmcg you will see uh, uh maybe um uh, uh fitness uh, home fitness uh, products um you know such categories which will uh, uh, still continue to see uh, for for example e-commerce pharma uh, carry out uh, food providers uh, online grocers so uh, these are the categories which will uh, advertise and uh, coming back to your question the boom category uh they will um you know definitely expect because in uh, a, a, any brand will try to uh, you know work towards increasing their uh, uh, 
uh, sale during this period. And um, so basically, the strategy would be that you know you do not uh, compromise on um, your rates, but give value adds. Right. So the value add could be in the form of uh, uh, you know brand integrations. It could be in the format of uh, I think somebody mentioned about Aston bands, L bands, the typical uh, uh, you know properties that you have on television, um, and of course uh, uh, some amount of uh, PR, editorial kind of stuff. So um, yeah, that is what uh, one can offer, but. Uh, I think st our strategy definitely would be to hold on to, uh, you know, pricing because in a scenario like this, even if you are a, a brand which is uh, in the booming category, uh, the media planners or the brand um, custodians would like to see how they can uh, further negotiate and uh, get the best value for their investment. Yes, Satish, the same question to you. How are you ensuring that advertisers get maximum value for their spends? The yeah, advertisers are already getting maximum value for their spends <laughs> simply because you're getting a lot of reach where people are sitting at home and watching lots and lots of television along with some OTT content too. So I guess they're getting enough and more for the money that they're spending now but or the little that they're spending. In this, are you doing anything particularly different? Uh, you know? Quite honestly, you know, not really. There are few advertisers who are spending money, so they're getting a fair amount of reach. There are some local brands who have got associated with our public service campaigns, you know, social distancing, wear a mask, use a sanitizer. So there are certain uh, creatives that we have made and we are putting it out on our network. And some local brands have seized this opportunity and associated themselves with this. Of course, the usual stuff that everybody else who has uh, spoken about you know, brands who are available and advertising in our channels have used all possible opportunities, which is non-FCT and FCT-led. So I guess uh, these are not the times to really, uh, now could be, you know, going forward, as a deep association possible of brands, and brands come with some deeper briefs as they look at the next 10 months of the Indian financial year. The last two months, April and May, if I say May is almost over, has been about you know, finding feet and figuring out how much money is likely to come this week. People are releasing uh, advertising on a weekly basis. The largest FMCG in this country was giving out release orders four days at a time. I have not seen anything like this in the last 30 years. Right? So I've not seen this even during Demon and GST times. So these have been very, very abnormal times. So it's about just to go with whatever came in. And look at opportunities when we have created, let's say, a Mother's Day and so on and so forth, certain opportunities that have arisen in the last uh, six, seven weeks. We've tried to capitalize on that, beyond which uh, we, we also made some original content for an entertainment channel uh, called Sneha Tode Vital Nindan, which is about you know, with love from home, connected with uh, artists, musicians, and singers and celebrities. So it is like an anchor talking to somebody else on the other end. They're shooting using their mobile camera, doing post-production work. So we're be innovative in our content in the entertainment space. Our news channel has managed to do interviews by sitting here in the studio with the politician or whoever is on the other side is sitting in their house or office. So a normal interview, hard talk kind of shows have happened long distance. So we've been trying to keep alive, sustain the content that we could try and put together from a news perspective by staying safe and from an entertainment perspective hardly any original content other than the one that we tried, which is just half an hour in a day for about three or four weeks. So going forward, I think there will be deeper reasons for brands to look at what can we do next. Uh, they also need to look at that outline for the rest of the year. Right? So how do they manage to get business back and not think that this year is a washout? So then there could be opportunities for broadcasters and uh, content creators to engage in a meaningful conversation. I just want to tell the viewers that they can start sending their questions. We have started receiving questions and we'll be asking those after 15 minutes. Uh, my question to you, Ms. Ramani, is that uh, what is your advice to brands? Uh, you know, uh, should they sell? Should they, should they look at reach? I mean, what is your advice to them? What is the best way to go about advertising in these times? Um. 
I think, I mean, there are many papers to talk about this, to say that, uh, you know, people should not go completely quiet from the stage. I mean, each brand has its own challenges, really depending on, you know, whether um, they're going to be making money, if they are not, etc. So just give me one minute, sorry, one second. So one of the, one of the things that we, uh, I mean, one of the things that, that's quite clear is that brands who stay um, active at this moment uh, are the brands which, uh, you know, have a presence at this moment and not go completely quiet are the ones which are going to benefit. And we have, you know, enough amount of research to back this up as well. Uh, the second thing to Puneet's point is to stay relevant, you know. What is the, uh, what is the communication that you are uh, currently providing to your consumer, right? You know, something which is uh, relevant is something which is going to um, is going to be very, very key at this moment because you have uh, consumer sentiments and behaviors at this moment are completely different from uh, the pre-COVID time, right? So you've got to kind of really understand what your consumer is uh, at, you know, what uh, mindset he is or he or she is, uh, she are, um, is at and uh, address it accordingly. Right. So that's the second thing, uh, which, you know, uh, which is something which is um, uh, which is something which we've been talking about to our advertisers as well and our brands. So these are the two, two key points here. Uh, Mrs. Sadia, my question to you, what should advertisers look at uh, in these times? What is the best approach according to you? Uh, so, Rohel, I'll give you an example, uh, you know, when it comes to my brand. So, uh, Siska is a very diversified brand now as we speak. So, it's not only into LED, which is the flagship segment that we are known for, but we are also into grooming appliances, uh, mobile accessories, wires and cables and smart devices. Now, what we saw in the last couple of weeks, you know, that the demand for uh, grooming appliances just sort of shot up through the roof. And more so because of the fact that, uh, you know, everybody was not at all, you know, able to go out and get themselves groomed. So what do you do then? So I completely even agree with uh, what Puneet spoke about. This is the time when the brand needs to, you know, go out and, and in fact, you know, help the, the, you know, the consumers if it is really possible within their domain. So similarly, even we as a brand, we decided as to how we can go out and help this particular need, right? So what we did was, um, we optimize the distribution, in fact, so the kind of distribution you have within the country traditionally, while that was not working, but yes, there were medical stores, there were these local Kirana shops that were operating, right, among whatever things happened. So we ensured that the product, you know, was available around these avenues. And, uh, and also we decided that, okay, we need to empower the consumers by giving them that support of self-styling or self-grooming by being at home and completely safe. So that is what we decided to sort of communicate. And uh, for that, we decided, you know, that we'll use the digital channels. And uh, today, as we speak, the demand still continues very high for my grooming appliances. And not only for grooming appliances, even for, uh, you know, the smart home devices that we have, because now, you know, everybody knows that, you know, we are staying back at home, we are spending a lot of time. So the, the demand has just, you know, shot again through the roof. And we are excited to sort of, you know, go out and, 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 you know, and meet those demands once the lockdown is over. So that has been the experience of these last two months, I would say, for us in the, in the group. Uh, Mr. Bhatti, I want to understand you, the view that, uh, what is the value that you are uh, trying to offer advertisers who are, you know, with you in these tough times? Are you going beyond the brief? I mean, what is the, what, what is happening on that front? We are working with uh, certain clients who are interested uh, in uh, doing uh, special content to suit uh, their needs and uh, to suit their uh, uh, communication. For example, uh, real estate, uh, Casa Grande, uh, what associated with us during the lockdown period in a very big way, where we had uh, a, a painting competition done virtually. We had thousands and thousands of entries which had, which had come in, which is just to do with how people uh, feel about the lockdown period and uh, their, imp the, 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 their, the, their impressions being put in, the, uh, put in paint, uh, put in painting. That we had uh, done with Casa Grande. 
like that uh, there are several other uh, brands who for which we are making uh, tailor made uh, content for them besides giving the non fcc uh, options which they are asking so we were not uh, very uh, keen to give in the past now we have actually uh, sort of uh, uh, come down on that and uh, are offering l bands and uh, aston bands which we originally thought that interferes with uh, the editorial uh, many of the time uh, we will continue to do this and uh, we will continue to uh, work with uh, those brands for wanting to uh, take up certain social causes for example we have uh, something called anbu palam which is a bridge between uh, the seeker and the, the, the between the benefactor and the benefited so through which we had actually collected close to about a crore for the cm relief fund and uh, we had helped uh, hundreds of people who were in need uh, where people used this arrangement of anbu palam to contribute and reach help to those who needed uh, there were certain brands who were associated with that were willing to do that similar such activities we will uh, we would like to take forward in future and to come whether it could be from their csr fund or if it's uh, 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 in a, as a good samaritan kind of act or for brand building at ground level we are looking at uh, activation like that of fm uh, with a news channel also as a news network we have very limited uh, uh, choice of doing content integration other than a laptop branding or keeping a mug beyond that Uh, we will not have much of an opportunity to do a content integration whereas we can tailor make content to suit the brand image of uh, uh, the advertiser right uh mr satish i want to come to you uh, what do you think is what lies ahead from here now for networks you know in terms of advertising in terms of viewership content i mean how do you see that spanning say in the next 5 6 months what are we going to see i think uh, definitely good times it, hopefully life can't be as bad as it was over the last two months so the next 6 uh, to 8 months certainly likely to be far better far more exciting content has to come back original content has to come back like cinemas have to come out entertainment has to come back to our life the without which uh, you know we continue to watch we also own news content people have to consume content which they are used to and they like to watch those kind of content so that will revive a great amount of positivity to the whole business you know the entire mainstream i think we all have a 12 hour work schedule we want to come back and watch a movie catch a bit of a news uh, watch our favorite soap or a sitcom so we need uh, the same variety back and i think we all you know whoever is here i'm sure is going through netflix and prime and Hotstar and all of the OTTs, Mano Ramam Max, of course. So all of these OTTs are also running out of content. So we need content back. That will start the whole story. The journey is about getting the act back, getting the real shares back. Brands will start looking at if that is what is going to happen. Soon you'll find brands have to get to the numbers and they will start doing what they've been used to do before COVID hit us. Yes, it is going to be challenging. It is going to be a lot more harder. definitely far more exciting times than what we've seen in the last year. i think the worst is over there could be this up and down that will happen the w's and v's and u's and people have been talking about all kinds of alphabets the economy i'm not a soothsayer to say that listen we'll be back to what last year was it probably is going to be a very hard year some tough decisions some people have been taking some more tough decisions could follow in the weeks and months to come but i am is we over here are fairly positive that the worst is probably or we have to live with this covid is here to stay okay. i'm not saying anything new you know until the vaccine is found it is here we have to be cautious we have to maintain all the the prescribed norms got to get back to routine business i guess uh, it is going to be a lot better than definitely what the last 8 weeks has been Ms. Reddy, your thoughts on this? Uh, what what lies ahead for networks? Um, see, this pandemic has been very different than what uh, you know we've seen before. Earlier, the recessions that have happened, the classic um, 
solution could uh, always be in that you know continue to spend during the recession and brands which uh, you know research uh, shows that brands which uh, spent during recession actually uh, gained because uh, they kept uh, investing in the brand kept in touch with their uh, consumers and uh, kept their share of voice uh, intact um those recessions uh, were different than what we are, we are seeing now so i don't think we can expect that the classic recessionary advice to keep spending will apply at this time because it's a dual thing there the it's caused a demand and supply shock now uh, uh, there are brands where uh, they are hit uh, because they are not able to supply there are brands uh, where uh, there is no demand Uh, for their products except uh, like i said the uh, brands uh, which uh, fall in the boom category so i um uh, uh, if you also see what uh, early signs are coming in from china the recovery is going to be tentative you know with a significant uh, normalization period it's not going to be like it's going to be normal within a couple of weeks kind of a thing so the normalization period itself is going to be significant and uh, brands require flexibility in terms of media outlay and uh, maybe re look at their packaging delivery service there are other issues that you know they'll be tackling other other than just uh, the marketing part okay so it is they are going to be challenging times it's not going to be easy globally also we are seeing that media spend and costs have fallen sharply across uh, categories and uh, we can only uh, hope things will uh, be different soon right um i want to just go to the audience questions i want to come to you mr das the first question is uh, uh, from ganesh sharma he's asking uh, with the current scenario of going fall on swadeshi how much impact will it have on larger brands uh the indian companies go aggressive to put down the global brands i don't think so i think uh, i i don't have too much comments on that but i don't think that uh, it's going to fundamentally change uh, anything uh, i think also it's what you interpret Uh, what what the government said and how it was interpreted i think is 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 very important to understand i think every brand has a role to play and uh, the need of the hr is to understand what is that role and uh, like i said in the short term it's about ensuring that you are available and i think in the medium to long term it's about <coughs> relevant and uh, and hence i think i don't see this as on the longer term being such a major trend Amit, for you, the question is: uh, How will we? How how do you see China factor going to make a difference uh, to your brand? As most of the FMCG brand, FMCG brands have a supply chain from China. So, uh, when uh, the whole LED technology was introduced in the country around ten uh, years back, I think that time the dependence, uh, you know, on China was fairly high because that time the technology was very new. In fact, right. and um, because of the widespread usage of this technology in the last 5 to 6 years in this very country a lot of brands including in fact cisco they have developed uh, the capabilities to produce you know the the different uh, offerings within the very you know territory in fact so as we speak right now uh, cisco has its own uh, you know uh, factories in india three of them and which are running up and high and uh, that is in fact ensuring that the dependence on the offshore uh, production capabilities keeps on reducing as we you know sort of go ahead so i agree uh, you know uh, there was a point when we started with something else but i think the, the development is when you actually you know create your, your own systems your own factories you know your own intelligence in fact to cater to the indian audiences mr bharati for you the question is from rajesh nayar uh, will the investment uh, on original content uh, reduce or you know increase post covid i don't i don't see a situation where the content cost is going to go down at all that is uh, important thing to note none of the cost is going to come down the broadcast cost is not going to come down the uh, platform cost is not going to come down the uh, the, the carriage distribution cost is not going to come down so also 
the the uh, the program production cost will not come down. It's not going to come down at all. Now it is very important for the advertisers and the brands to ensure that the channels don't go under. It's a, we are all partners in business, and this is a time where each one has to support the other. It is not a time to go for a kill and you know negotiate stuff. It's a time where we all show uh, solidarity with each other. If anybody is looking at the programming cost is going to go down. I don't think so. Uh, Ms. Rani, for you, the question is, uh, will M, uh, from LX George, will NBFC as a category see growth in South post-COVID? Non-banking finance, you know. In the South, specifically? Yes. I'd like to think so. Yes, I mean, I think. Uh, or you can specifically on that is is. Or maybe, uh, or maybe you can. I mean, what, what kind of categories would you kind of see that might be growth oriented post the COVID? You know, as far as television. I think I think broadly, I mean, if you're looking at it, I think you'll have your essentials which will continue to to do well. Now, uh, you know, a lot of other categories, it's, it's about how brands and categories actually take an opportunity in this entire space as well, right? I mean, we, we could, we, we could uh, stand here today and say that, you know, the auto, auto category is not going to do well, but it's about how brands and categories actually take opportunities in this particular uncertainty. So a brand could look, an auto category, for instance, could look at this to say that, okay, people are going to be a bit worried about taking public transport. So let me kind of use this as an opportunity to get in. So I think the categories which, you know, outside of essentials, I think the categories which are really going to do well and which are going to win are the ones who are able to take advantage or look at an opportunity in this entire uncertainty. So that's kind of broadly. So specifically whether NBFCs are going to do well, I mean, I, I think a lot of it is, I mean, even within the FMCG space, right, you can see that actually, uh, you know, the, the premium products are not going to, but you can also say that the premium products could see an opportunity here. Because as people are going to be, uh, you know, um, at home, you could look at, you know, what was called the lipstick effect, right? So you could look at opportunities in those. So people are still going to want certain luxuries in their life. Uh, it's about how your brand and product is able to speak to them and how your brand and product is able to convince them that uh, they are still relevant and necessary in their lives. Sir, uh, for you, the question is from Shireen uh, De Cruz. Uh, how do you see online festivities this year? Can you repeat the question? How do you see the Onam festivities uh, in this year? Brilliant. I was waiting for this question. I guess. Onam is the first festival in the Hindu, the Indian calendar, right? The festival starts from Kerala. Onam has to be good. I don't think people stop celebrating Onam. The only time probably Malayalis, the recent parts, didn't celebrate Onam was two years ago when we had the massive floods. And it fell right around the two days of Onam. So that was the only time people didn't celebrate Onam. So I guess Onam will definitely happen. A lot more Malayalis coming back home. Good or bad, they're coming back from all over the world. Coming back to India, they're coming back to Kerala, they're feeling a lot more safer here. The inputs that we have is Onam is going to be great. You know, we talk to all the local partners, all the retailers. I think most of them are looking forward to Onam as part of the pre Onam time, you know, the first uh, the COVID, the first quarter is almost going away. So it's, it's an opportunity that is really looking forward to get the consumers back. People feel a lot more safer by the time. Schools will hopefully be back. The CBSE has announced the exams in early July. So I guess admissions, etc., would be over. So it's going back to near normalcy or living with these pandemic times. So Onam is likely to be extremely good as is our round uh, input. Uh, for Mr. Ms. Reddy, for you, the question is from, uh, the name is not given, that, you know, uh, network owners also promote their shows. They also spend, you know, they also do that ad spend. So. Uh, will it continue in this environment if you are putting up new shows together? Would you still spend on promoting them on other networks or other you know, mediums? Um, uh, I, I, um, 
uh, I would say that, you know, the media houses that have, uh, you know, other, uh, like, for example, Sakshi has a news channel. We do also have a newspaper. So for us to do that is not difficult because we will use the, uh, you know, the strength of our uh, circulation to drive uh, the programming, uh, the television programming. But uh, otherwise, if it is an expenditure where you're going to go out and spend a lot of money, I'm not sure in this kind of a scenario, uh, uh, they'll spend. Because uh, from what I see, monetization uh, in the COVID times is not only going to be uh, the revenue that you generate. Monetization is also going to be what you save. Uh, I want to come to you, uh, Mr. Das. Uh, are, are you, uh, I mean, what are your expectations from regional channels right now? Uh, you know, if I could understand it from you. See, I think the expectation, not just from, I think, regional, but in general is, I think, is how do you play to your strength? I mean, see, what has COVID done is basically, uh, there are two ways to treat this. One is, all of us can think, you know, is something that has happened exceptional. Let's just put a bandaid on it and let's and things will come back to normal. And I think that that would be the wrong approach, in my opinion. I think crises like this expose, accelerate the long the trends which are already there. And I think clearly what one needs to look at from this is when we come out of this, how have we changed ourselves or adapted ourselves to the new normal, which people keep saying. Now, if there is a demand in viewership which has gone in, but it has not been able to monetize, what does it tell you? It just tells you that, and the shares are relatively equal. Is that... Are people innovating enough, for example? You know, so, uh, you know, are, are uh, broadcasters doing that? Are, are brands asking for that kind of innovation? So I think the expectation when we come out of this uh, is, is that how do you learn from this and adapt to the new reality? A lot of, I think people keep talking about the new content would come back and, you know, it will be good. But what would the new content, what would we have learned with that new content? You know, people have now got a taste of, at a, at a, at a larger scale, about the OTT and the variety over there. You know, their expectation is, is variety like that when it comes back. So are, are, the, cha are the channels geared up to deliver that? Uh, second is about personalization. You know, a regional, uh, when, when you pick up a regional channel, a lot of it is also about uh, adding a bit of personalization over and above your overall plan. So how, how do you sort of cater to that in, in, in this uh, new normal? So I think the expectations, in my opinion, are huge. And I think it's exciting time. The only, only... Uh, uh, be an optimist. I think all of us, both brands and broadcasters, need to learn and adapt to the new day. And the one who does it better will actually, you know, uh, actually be the better off in the long run. Right. Um, my final, this is my final question to everyone, um, like a TV show host does it. So I'm giving you 20 seconds for the answer. Uh, Mr. Steesh, for you, for you uh, first, what would be the new normal like for TV networks? Quickly, mm -hmm. 20 seconds. New normal life for a TV network is to continue to work the way that we worked the last two months, do a lot more. I don't think we switched off. We are part of essential services. Continue to entertain our audiences, give out credible news content. Do better, as uh, uh, Puneet Das mentioned, about uh, understanding the brand's requirements also and work with them to you know, sort of uh, put together meaningful content. I guess, yes, also about uh, uh, understanding this one, two percent audience segment who's also seen a lot of variety in OTT space. So as an OTT player, how do we address that challenge along with being a broadcaster? Mr. Bharati, quick words from you. The new normal for networks. Uh, it is going to be pretty much the same. We are going to continue to do the good work that we have been doing. Uh, of course, uh, there has been a lot of learning, and the learnings have to be uh, put into uh, put into practice. Uh, look at newer and greener opportunities, and try and work uh, closely with uh, uh, closely in those areas, and uh, get out of the situation. And this uh, the situation can't be much worse than what it is. We have seen the worst. And uh, it, uh, the future can't be bad um, worse than this. Perfect. Perfect. And Ms. Reddy, your thoughts on this? Uh, I would say that uh, it's not going to be only the ad sales department, which will be worried about uh, meeting the bottom lines and the numbers. It should be the entire organization, people making content, uh, and everybody around the, the organization. And yes, uh, we need to move from 
feeling like victims of the pandemic to survivors and then go on to be thrivers. Great words. Mr. Sethia, your thoughts? What will be the new normal for brands? Yeah, so uh, for brands, I think, uh, and that's a personal perspective, uh, the new normal should be to ensure that we don't go back to same as before situation. Because if we go back to the same situation, then I think we are going to be again as vulnerable as we are today in future as well. So I think, uh, you know, we need to ensure that whatever the situation has taught us, we need to go ahead and, and, and honestly implement that, you know, and that's the joy and that's the pride. Take the lesson seriously. Great. Uh, Ms. Ramani, your quick thoughts on this. Uh, what would be the normal for brands, for networks, for viewers, you know, uh, on a broader, broader perspective? Yeah. I think what uh, brands, advertisers, broadcasters, I think all of us, what we have to do is really understand, identify, adapt, change, you know, pretty much learn and relearn as we go along. I think pivoting, you know, quickly is one of the most important things that we don't need going forward because situations and circumstances are going to change uh, quite rapidly. So I think adapting to these and pivoting to take advantage of it is going to be important. Mr. Das, you have the last word. So what would you like to add? You can hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I said that I think remains, uh, uh, would be, I think, really adapt to new content vehicles, uh, mediums. And I think, uh, you know, really experiment. And I, I think that should, uh, you know, help you uh, sort of prepare for the future ahead. And, and, and I think that should be the norm. Be like comfortable with, with whatever new content medium is being thrown at you. Okay. Ms. Satish, you want to add to it? You want to say something? And then that's the last point here. Satish, you're muted. Audio is muted. Okay, I can hear. We can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think it's about all working together. As uh, uh, Chandra mentioned, it's about the entire ecosystem working together to revive ourselves. Everybody has a problem, right? Let's all work together and find a solution. Uh, things should look better. Yes, it's going to be hard. Unless we all work together, the agencies, the broadcasters, the content creators, the newspapers, the brands, and so on and so forth, Come to us with your, you know, briefs, your challenges. Let's work together to see how we can, you know, create new markets or retain market shares and so on and so forth. It's about the entire ecosystem working together with the purpose should see us through tough times the next six to one, six months to a year. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today. It has been a great discussion, some very insightful points. And uh, we will continue. This is uh, this was the first uh, webinar of E4M India Brand Conclave Virtual Series Dakshin, and we'll bring you many more uh, as we go along. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we still had a lot of questions, but in the we don't have time to go on answering them. So thanks once again for being part of this discussion.